Hello. We are live. We, we are, are the Mad Scientists. That's Mad Frankie. Who am I? Violet Igor. Thank you. And together, we are the Mad Scientists. We. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. That was weird. <laughs> okay, I want to say hello to everyone that's here. We've got Liz, of course. Liz is here. And yes, we'd like to know how P is feeling today. Um, her, her cough, I know she said she sounded worse than she looked but and felt, but I'd still like to know how she's doing. Hi, Silver Granny and Grumpy Gnome. Oh, welcome, welcome. First time viewer. Well, thank you for being here. Um, Hello, PM Artist Studio and PM Artist Studio for Silver Granny and Grumpy Gnome and anyone else that's new. That would be Mariah. Who else He's do we doing have? Mariah's on her phone, so it's harder to chat. Boy, do I know that one. Okay. Yeah. So welcome, welcome, everyone. Today is going to be a fun day. Fran, oh, there's Carol. Hi, Carol. The magical touch Hi, Carol. studio. Um, Hi, Frank, so I'm going to be banging away. Fran's got some frustrations to get out. So, um, and a little, uh, maybe a little anger she needs to get rid of, but we won't talk about that. Um, <laughs> so she's going to be banging away on stuff. And, and so be aware to maybe mute if you need to, wherever you need to. Um, and hopefully we'll have fun. And I'm, I'm, if anyone's wondering, just to get it out of the way, I'm, uh, I've crocheted some little tiny dresses here, and I wanted to alter the pattern. Hi, Anne. Welcome, welcome. I wanted to alter the pattern a little bit so that this scallop down here is across the uh, sleeve, too. So I'm playing with the pattern. Look, Fran, she can't wait. She's anxious to get the hammer in. Look at her. <laughs> you can feeble. So that's what I'm doing. And if, if if Fran needs to wander off and do anything or I need to take over, I have I will be back to reading The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe once again. Maybe I'll get to finish it. Maybe not. Who cares? Look at her. She can't wait. She just can't wait. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All right. Okay. You want to take me off the camera and, and go full screen and tell everybody okay. more of what you're doing? Okay. Right. Well, what I'm doing is I'm going to show you the first part, at least how you begin um, making patina on real metal. So I got myself some bits of real metal to do that with. And this is just an odd piece off my um large sheet where i've been cutting you can see where i've cut some holes there and you know it was just attached over there somewhere i think i could just cut it off into a, you know use up that shape which i wouldn't otherwise normally use or i might cut into blanks of different sizes and shapes and whatever so there i've got a funny shape and i've put one of the um Signs of the Zodiac there, another one there. Just going to pick another one. Um, which one shall I have? Let's have that one. And I find that um, these things print better. <coughs> if you've got a nice solid bit of metal underneath, like that bench block. And I sort of twist this very, very slightly. can barely see me moving it. And I forgot to do it on that one, so I didn't quite get that edge. <coughs> but that's what I've done. And with this one, I just did some hammering with the edge of the... Yeah, you're you're off the camera, my dear. You're you're Am I? Yeah, you need to put your hammer in where your chips are. There you go. Now we can see. Oh now you've really come in close. Wow. See. See, I've made um, impressions with those three little stamps. Yes. 
<clears throat> and with this one, I'm just hammering at it with the corner of that flat blade. So I'm just uh, putting dots all over here. <clears throat> Doesn't take much because this is really light metal, you know, it's not particularly thick. And I can do it from the other side as well. <coughs> so that way I'll have um, points and dents the other side of the piece of metal so these are places for patina to go into I'm keeping this one this piece flat so you see what happens and the majority of that is flat you can always do this sort of thing afterwards but you're more likely to disturb the patina <coughs> by doing that so let's pack that up for now, because that's all I really want to do, just a little demo. I mean, if I was doing a lot of work, I'd be doing it on something like that, which is the big flower I'm working on. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I should have reminded you your inhaler before we began. Yeah, I, sh yeah, I should have got that. You can mute right. and go, go step away if you need to. I'll entertain the masses. Ha, ha, ha. I've got a cup of tea here, so... There you go. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do with this... So you want to back out again? Oh, oh yeah. Back out a bit. Yes. Did that a bit fiercely, sorry. Uh, pack of crisps. Salt and vinegar. Doesn't really matter. Plain crisps will do almost as well. I should imagine. I mean, what you want is the fat from the from the crisps. So <clears throat> these days they do a lot of baked potatoes, and I'm not so sure about that. Yes, so I don't fat. understand the reasoning for the fat because I've created rust with the salt vinegar. Oh yeah, but um, the fat in the crisps um, enables the crisp to stick slightly to the metal. So that gives it a texture. Contact, good contact, and um, it creates a pattern in okay. the patina. That I can understand. Yeah. Hi, Chris. Welcome, welcome. Where's our Evie? Where's our Evie? Is she breathing okay today? So. So what you call Chris here, we call them potato chips. Same yeah. difference. So you crunch them all up, which I know you had fun doing that. Yeah. And then put some more in. <clears throat> Do you want to cover it? So I'm not being naughty. I didn't eat any. So I have some vinegar. I couldn't, wasn't allowed to use the ordinary malt vinegar because he has that on his fish and chips. So we want to create a moist atmosphere in here. And I also need to mop that up that I've just spilt. What a nitwit. Spilt one somewhere. Oh, oh, this room's going to smell not a nitwit. fish. A clutch, maybe, but not a nitwit. There we go. The only one who can call you names is me. Oh, okay. What are you going to call me? Well, at the moment, a little bit clutchy. 
but it, it's a crusty. Okay, what is that? Salt. Salt. Because I thought I'm going to vinegar, Chris. I'm just increasing the ratio a bit. Okay. <laughs> and then vinegar. Now, is this is this plain vinegar or apple cider vinegar or red wine vinegar? It's it doesn't salt, matter. Honestly, salt. I've tried all of them. Well, most all of them. This is distilled malt vinegar. Okay. Just vinegar. I wish I had your punches right there, your letter punch, your thingy punches. Yeah, those. They're pretty good. They're um, Zodiac, signs of the Zodiac, these ones. Oh, I would like those. I've got some letter ones somewhere. I don't. I, I could only grab those, so I grabbed them. So there we are. We've got all the stuff in there. I'm trying to make sure there's contact all over it. So we're going to get pattern all over. Hopefully. Okay, let's let's go with some questions. What kind of salt is crystals okay rather than fine salt? Well, I would grind the crystals up a bit to make yeah. a, a fine powder. Yeah. You yeah. just want to get it in there. I mean, it's not going to create a pattern in the shape of the crystal. It's just that the crystals or or rock salt would take longer to activate um, go into the vinegar and be, go into solution. You just want to create a nice atmosphere. So I'm going to put the lid on that. And that is that for now. And cheap vinegar oh, will work well. Yes, that's, yeah. I oh, just yeah, doesn't have cheap vinegar. Yeah. yeah. And Evie's yeah, here. Hi, Evie. And I'm so glad your asthma is in check. Yay. Who? Who's there? Evie. Remember, she had a, a little bit of an asthma Evie? problem the other day. And I was, well, Saturday. And oh. I was worried about her breathing. Um, hi, Martha. So we'll I remove hammer and things. We are making mad scientist uh, uh, rust patina screw. So oh, she, copper and brass patina. I yeah. put copper and brass in there. Yeah, that. So what she said. I've got a, two pieces of brass and a piece of copper in there. And we will have a look another time. Because it's not going to be done in sort of 10 minutes. Right. I would come back and have a look at that this evening, maybe, before going to bed, uh, possibly tomorrow morning or even the day after. But I wouldn't leave it more, much more than a few days. If you leave it more than a few days, you run the risk of it disintegrating your copper. And because I've got fairly thick copper there, I mean, it's only just cuttable with scissors, that copper. I normally use something like that to cut the copper or these tin snips to cut copper right because they've got a bit more having the long handles a bit more push oomph. Uh, but the brass is so thin that you could easily co cut it with um with just a pair of scissors i'm going to cut that one with this just ordinary scissors so we'll put that aside for now to okay, amalgamate. So we, so we, may be, we, we will probably be back with a, a stream on Wednesday to do a little more show on that, right? You think? Yeah. It'll either be Wednesday, Friday, or wait till Monday. Yeah. But I wouldn't want to wait a lot longer than that. I mean, I will check it every so often and have a look. Yeah. And if it looks like it's, it's done to the way I like it, I'll take it out. So... I'll probably do a little short showing you the result of it then. There you go. There you go. There you go, yes. And I've been painting this one, which is part of a coffee filter. <laughs> uh, you may not notice, but there's a couple of coffee filters in here, in this thing. There's Ooh, one. Okay. okay. One down here, you see. I've I've left a bit more of a rim on that one. You see? And I've left this piece on which is attached to the rim. Otherwise I would have cut the whole thing off like I did with that one. See? Now that one's been treated with black. 
This one hasn't. It's only had silver on it at the moment. So I can put some black on there. You sort of dry brush it on. And I've got various bits here. But um, I'm sort of swithering. 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 That sounds like something from Harry Potter. I don't think so. Well, maybe maybe they, maybe it's been said in there, but it's English anyway. <laughs> One of our little English words. So this is the piece I've been working on. Let me just adjust that a bit. So I've got a large piece of organza there. Get those out of the way. I'll have to put the salt down as well. There we are. Now you can see that I've got a piece of organza on this. And uh, I'm not sure whether to use this piece and this delicate minty green or maybe this piece in this more sort of lichen-y green. I'm not sure, but I don't want it double wrap. Little fold of it like that. I just I want a little wash of it. Going. And I want it going across there. Oh, very nice. I like that. I mean, well, if you had I had some in an orange, that would go too. But I like the green. Well, I don't think orange would go. No? No, not with my idea. Okay. It's not but Halloween. I, I, well, it is. It, it's a pumpkin color. Exactly. But this is not Halloween. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Well, this, is, this is... I temporarily called it battle, but what it is, it's sort of, um, what's the word I want? The trouble is I can't think what the single word is. I can describe what's going on. Well, go for and it. And that's, the, um, we've got uh, the battle between nature, the natural world, and technology. And it seems to sort of ebb and flow, especially if you watch um, Abandoned Engineering. You see where engineering has been left lying about and nature has taken it over. And uh, I, I find that quite satisfying in a way. You know, uh, the government built this huge bridge and these great big um, outbuildings. And now nature has grown a tree through the middle. <laughs> and I like that very idea. But it sort of ebbs and flows, you know. Sometimes um, nature looks as though it's winning, it's come back. And sometimes it looks as though nature has been taken out of it and removed and technology is taking over. So that's the sort of feel I'm going for with this. So we've got different bits of wood, mm -hmm. uh, differing <laughs> textures. This piece of bark off one of my trees and sticks here there's another one there and then there's these lichen pieces with the with the lovely lichen growing on it and um various bits of technology floating about the place i like the idea of this as a sort of mist um, acting like a kind of veil over some of it you know Obviously, this cable's not going to be there. It's just my light. But, uh, yeah, all these different bits and sort of amalgamation between the two worlds, as it were. So it's a sort of ebb and flow, really. And I haven't yet decided whether it's going to be uh, a wall piece or a table piece, you know, whether it's going to exist in this way or upright. I've stuck some of these pieces together, like that's all stuck together, but that is sitting free at the moment. 
I do like the idea of it being able to move, but you'd probably just lose that. So I don't know whether I shall keep with that. Uh, that's been stuck down. It hasn't been put in position. Uh, ditto most of these other bits are just um, thinking about the position. But this dried beautifully. This substrate that we put on last time has dried beautifully. It's it's really nice now. Wow. It's, it's come up beautiful. I wondered about leaving those sticks bare, but when you said silver or something metallic like copper, I went, okay, copper, because I have other copper here, you see, and I thought that would balance out quite nicely. It does. I like it better than the plain sticks. Silver, yeah. Granny, has, Silver Granny has a uh, question for you. Um, yeah. She says, Fran, have you treated your organics with anything to eliminate any buggy problems? No, but one of the ways you can do that is by cooking it in the microwave for 30 seconds. So I could do that, no problem. I do that with feathers as well. Yeah. That kills any bugs in it. But yeah, that's the idea. So one would have to start by laying other bits down. So I must open that door. I'm starting to get quite hot in here. Okay. The door shut. Very small room. And and if anyone noticed, I post a link. I have um, Fran inspires me so much. I don't think she realizes how much. So I went back and found a steampunk journal cover that she made back in 2013. Oh. Right about, and this was before Fran and I knew each other, way before we knew each other. And she was streaming uh, by herself. Um, yeah, that's very. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't know what I was doing, so it's oh, a very okay. bad. <laughs> you, you, your, your, your videos from back then are really, really good. Um, anyway, I had been watching this video for the steampunk. It was done with foil. She, used, she laid like her pieces out like she has there, and then she covered it with crumpled foil. It was beautiful, and I had well. to. I have to sit down and work on it. So that's what I've been doing. And I put the link in the uh, above there, if anyone can see it. That's what that link is to, one of her 2013 uh, videos. She, The way Fran explains things and describes things, it's just like Mariah said. I love when Fran, it's all, you know, the way she describes what she's doing. She's very good at it. Well, thank you. I don't agree, but thank you. <laughs> Right, 3D matte gel. So it's 3D matte gel, or it's <sighs> everybody gel. Now oh, that one's not open. It's the other I one. I picked up the wrong one. Yep, I did. It's down here. Ah, oh, drop the earth. Earth effects paint. She is. And Fran, Anne says that you are a natural teacher. I agree. If I be quiet long enough and let you talk, you're great. You're. Yep. I don't believe that one either. <laughs> I don't care. It's true. I just want to grab a. Oh, that do. I only need a little bit. Right, so this is one that was a good look before. Now I'm going to stick these corner pieces on first because I want those in the corner. I know I want those in the corner. So globs of glue here and there. Hi, Colleen. And Colleen says now that you've explained your theme, she can see your vision. Yes, that's the trouble, you see. If you've got to be there telling everybody what it's all about, is it a success or not? Would you have to have a little recording by your piece in a museum somewhere saying, this is what I was thinking? Yeah. Not that I expect it in a museum, but, you know. Besides, if, if the art doesn't explain itself. I mean, it was inspired originally by the Striking Sticks projects that have been going on. 
Right, the collab, the PM Artist Studio collab. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Oh man, I'm wild. I haven't even finished watching everything. I'm just, I'm just. Mariah, your piece is, as always, most excellent. Yeah, you so that one. You created so many photographs from so many artists in our group. Just, it's just beautiful. There we go. Right, so those two are there, and I would definitely want that stick there. putting some slathery glue on I I I noticed that um Mariah was her chair Sunday was cracking me up cuz I've had that happen it's like yep whatever the hydraulics is in that chair it shot my butt wore it out and so there were some super chats for her to get a new chair. And I, I have a suggestion. Instead of actually, they, just a minute, that not just super chats for her to get a new chair, but super chats for her to keep the chair because it was so hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. I heard that part. Yeah. Um, so I was thinking, you know what? Keep the chair, keep the chair. and use the money to take a week off, not go on a cruise with Izzy and Brad, not that I don't love Izzy and Brad or even Pete, but maybe a mother-daughter uh, week or weekend retreat with all kinds of cr a crafty retreat where Mariah can just take her brain and get away from work and just create. Because when that girl creates, it always comes out beautiful. I'm not stroking you, Mariah. I'm just saying. It's <laughs> yeah, true. we don't see enough of Mariah. We could ought to see a bit more. Oh, she she works so hard. She works so I know, hard. I, know. I happen to know the 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 brain cells that it takes to do everything she's doing, and I don't even come close to knowing what she's doing. So yeah. It, it, yeah. There's a GoFundMe needs to be started for Mariah to get a week off, and even a week off would just be a jump start. You still need another month. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's the thing, isn't it? Yep. She works so hard. Right. So I've got those stuck down. And I want that one going across, but I've got to put that down there so that goes there there we are so i can put that one down so my question is i know that thing over there is a pill pack or it reminds me of your pill pack yes yeah so what's the copper thing on top of it it looks corrugated or hmm it's made from um bamboo cotton buds you know, with the cotton wool on either end for your ears or whatever else. Oh, you're not supposed to use them for your ears. Whatever. So I just removed all the cotton off the ends and I got myself some little sticks. That's what these are as well. So you took the, the Q-tip swabs and took the cotton off the end and glued the sticky parts all together to make a plate like that. Yeah. Well, I'll be darned. Who what I talking? did was I took them off for that one liked it so much I wanted to make some more of those <clears throat> and in fact I, I used them for the beads as well for these so <laughs> I, I good, good. Off in order to make some more beads and um, saw them lying there together and I thought actually I like the way they look like that so I just stuck them together used another one to bridge it to glue them together and we've got a little sort of raft now if you've ever heard of flag fen that's no. a archaeological site in the UK where they found um, various things including a little platform made not of nice straight sticks like that but of um, uh, pieces just lying about that have been put together you know uncarved just pieces 
and um, put there for the people who were using this area as a crossing across marshy land. Uh, that was a bit where there was um, more water. <clears throat> and they reckon that that's where they um, created a, a little platform for um, throwing, um, for putting, not throwing necessarily, but carefully placing offerings to the to the gods, the god, or, or to the spirits or whatever, mm -hmm. uh, placing it in water. You know, the, the they thought of the water the water as the bridge between this world and the next. Hmm. One of the ideas. So, and I love that idea. I absolutely love that idea. So I thought that's that sort of in, um, bringing that to mind. This piece, it's it's much too neat for that, but that's what that makes me think of, like a and little then bridge. You, then, you, uh, then you painted it copper and put some patina on there, from what I can see. Yep, I did. Well, that was after you'd said I, when I asked what. Um, what color I should, uh, whether I should even bear or paint them, and you suggested a metallic color, and then oh, some silver, possibly yeah. copper, and of course I went, okay, copper. <laughs> well, now that piece you just picked up, the 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 spiral thing, um, yeah. what is that made from? Now we know the spokes are from Q-tip stems. Yeah. Q-tip yeah. stems. And that's a cotton reel, as you can see. A cotton reel, as in in, in America, uh, a thread spool. Yeah, thread spool. Yeah. Yeah. And this is the lid from a um, um, drinks bottle. Popped off the drinks bottle. You know, water, yeah. cap for water. Yeah, right. And that, so I would think a squirt cap. lid off a water bottle. Or no, it's not a squirt one. No, it's just a, a flat cap. Okay. Screws on. Oh, I see. I see it. I see it. And this, this piece here, stuffed into it the wrong way around, that is the lid of a um, eyedropper bottle. Yep. My goodness, Fran, you don't throw anything away. No, that's the idea. Don't throw anything away. <laughs> you would. So I'm just going to put some. Throw it away. Until you throw it first. Yeah. Exactly. I do do that sometimes, stuff yeah. I've had a very long time, and I'm thinking, I'm not actually using that, or else, like when we had the flood, there was a load of stuff I'd saved, paper and packing, yeah. and after the flood from the loo above, I wasn't about to keep it any longer. I I just, just somewhere in my, my imagination, you have a room full of treasure chests, and if you open the chest, you'll find all kinds of little bits and bobs of stuff like this that you can just open yeah. Have now put that little stud thing. It's actually um, something that you put in like you would a rivet into some material, and um, it's a breathing thing. Not not for a mask. This is be before COVID. Uh, like you would in maybe tent material. So you've got some sort of um, outlet, and th that's what this is as well. Just a bigger size. A grommet, I think they call them. Huh. So I like that. So I, I kept that one. Well, and, and I know from the video that I've been watching of yours from 2013, where you were making the uh, foil covered book cover, book front, um, you yeah. had actually taken those bronze brads, I think they were bronze, um, like upholstery brads, and yeah. you, you clipped the nail part off. You cut it yes. off. Stick it on. Brad top to place on the uh, journal cover, and I'm I'm thinking, oh, I have some things for that. And Russ always has leftover little tiny washers, different size washers in his pocket that come out in the laundry that I collect. He calls them. Okay, let's stick this down. Let's make a big decision and stick down a major part. So initially, the foundation of this is a um, paper where you uh, use canvas. It's canvas with canvas. paper on top. Of it. Right, the canvas uh, frame with the paper on top, and the paper is made using. To recap from um, 
Last week oh, it made with rice. So what they're seeing there, the bits are rice. Uh, it's coffee dyed. Is that coffee dyed? Yep, yep it's coffee dyed. Coffee rice dyed. and I think a few bits of um, vermicelli, possibly. Yep. <clears throat> to create the look, it almost looks textured. Yep. In fact, it it in places does still feel a bit textured. There's some salt there that was on it. <clears throat> Um, Colleen would like to know again what glue you are using for those heavy metal objects. This is what she told me. Heavy body gel. Or I could use 3D matte gel. Yep. But they're both transparent, you see. So yep. they, you don't see them so much when they've dried up <clears throat> with any luck. That's exactly what you told me to get for my yep. um, metal piece on my book cover. So I'm going to put some glue on the bottom of this one. Hi, Penny. Welcome, welcome. That's rather a lot. I put a bit too much on there. Sorry, darling, I've used the crisps, so they're not available anymore. <laughs> that's, I, know, I happen to know that roof is at your feet hoping for some more no, no. yes it is but there's also um, somebody with a packet of McCoy's salt and vinegar and a packet of hula hoops oh. Oh. and the dog is very interested in him <laughs> <laughs> hi Ian he's gone already yeah I, I figured so this gel that you use, this even works on that bit of copper piece up there at the top. Yeah, that um, I use that in there as well. Glued the sticks in. The sticks are still slightly moving, but not much. That's why that's wonky. But I don't really care. <clears throat> I and mean, it, it's it will work. In engineering anyway. It will work for the tree bark also, right? Oh yeah, yeah. I, I'm just clarifying for the for the chatters. Yep. Hey, now, are those are those gears? Are they metal or or uh, chipboard, cardboard? Metal. They're out of a they're out of a clock. And in fact, with this one, there's an, another coffee filter there. You can see. Uh huh. Uh, <clears throat> this is um, a centerpiece out of the um, nutmeg grinder that I turned into a spaceship. So this piece was loose. And it's got nasty little metal pieces there that grip and um, push down on the um, the nutmeg, right? So I've got that there. And then I put this cog in there. But this cog has a long um, piece of metal, the continuation of this bit, all the way down to there. So what I did was it wasn't sticking on its own to the top. So I, I filled the inner of the... <clears throat> of this it's hollow in the same way that a, a cotton reel is hollow so i filled the inner chamber with glue and a bit more and that has held it in place nicely as i say this is not stuck down yet as you can see so it's still yeah. free to move i'm not sure what i'm going to do about that whether i will keep that like that i might put some <clears throat> well i don't know i'm still thinking about what i might or might not do with that hi lisa welcome welcome but this piece ought to be stuck down now. I'll probably have to wait till everything is quite secure before putting the wood on. And I still haven't decided which piece of organza to use. Which one of those two? I mean, I'm not sure. They're, they're both beautiful and they're both light colored enough that they would work. So, yeah, it would be a, a, a hard, a hard. The thing is. <clears throat> this one is closer to the color of some of the lichen. Yeah. And yeah. this one creates more of a sort of foggy, misty look. Yes, it does. So I'm not sure. I'm still thinking about that. Trish Coogan has a comment for you. Oh, hi, Trish Coogan. I don't think I've um, come across Trish Coogan before. Welcome oh, to the Trish and Trish and Coogan <laughs> come together. Um, well, not always, but they're they're 
great friends like you and I, I think. Um, she says, and I quote, you are awesome, Fran. <laughs> and you. I happen to agree. <laughs> no question. I think it's daft, but there we go. <clears throat> that's, that's beside the point. There we go. So now I can put that on top of there nicely. So what I've got to do is I've got to put some glue on the inside of this so that it grips the inner part. Colleen says, I like how the spoked gadget at the top overhangs the edge of the piece. It breaks up the line yeah. of the rectangle. Well, I was intending for this to do a similar idea to be hanging off the edge like that. Can you see that? Yeah. I like that idea. <coughs> I love that it's all 3D. And then when you're done, see, I happen to have an in here. So when you're done, I can get a picture and print it out. <laughs> yeah. And have it, yeah. Um, Penny, Penny wants to know, may I ask, what is this contraption? It's just intuitive. It's, art. it's just intuitive freeform art. It's just Fran being a mad scientist doing her thing. <clears throat> I, I wish you had your UFO um, in front of you that you could show a... Well, I don't get the piece I put on the wall off. Yeah, it, I... I yeah, it's beautiful. I mean, I watched you all through <coughs> many a night together while you made that. Yeah. I'll tell you what, if you read some Poe, I can blow my nose and go and fetch that at the same time. Okay. okay. Put yourself on mute. Yeah. She's put me in the hot seat again. Here we go. While Fran wanders off to get something, I will start The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe. From the beginning. Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered, weak and weary, over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, while I nodded, nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping, as of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. Tis some visitor, I muttered, tapping at my chamber door, only this and nothing more. Ah, distinctly I remember it was in the bleak December, and each separate dying ember wrought its ghost upon the floor. Eagerly I wished the morrow, vainly I had sought to borrow from my book surcease of sorrow, sorrow for the lost Lenore, for the rare and radiant maiden whom the angels named Lenore, nameless here forever more. And the silken sad uncertain rustling of each purple curtain thrilled me, filled me with fantastic terrors never felt before. So that now, to still the beating of my heart, I stood repeating, "'Tis some visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door, some late visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door. This it is, and nothing more." Presently my soul grew stronger, hesitating, then no longer. "'Sir,' said I, or madam, Truly your forgiveness I implore, but the fact is I was napping, and so gently you came rapping, and so faintly you came tapping, tapping at my chamber door, that I scarce was sure I heard you. Here I opened wide the door, darkness there, and nothing more. Deep into that darkness peering, long I stood there wondering, fearing, doubting, dreaming dreams no mortal ever dared to dream before. But the silence was unbroken, and the stillness gave no token, and the only words there spoken was the whispered word, Lenore. This I whispered, and an echo murmured back the word, Lenore. Merely this, and nothing more. Back into the chamber turning, all my soul within me burning, soon again I heard a tapping, somewhat louder than before. Surely, said I, surely that is something at my window lattice. Let me see then what thereat is, and this mystery explore. Let my heart be still a moment, and this mystery explore. Tis the wind, and nothing more. Open here I flung the shutter, when with many a flirt and flutter, in there stepped a stately raven of the saintly days of yore. 
Not the least obesant made he, not a minute stopped or stayed he, but with me <laughs> and a lady perched upon my chamber door, perched upon a bust of palace just above my chamber door, perched and sat, and nothing more. And she's back. Hello. Back to you. Okay. Let me just remove this organza for a moment. <clears throat> Thank you, Tommy. Things over a bit. To show you this. And take me off screen. There you go. There you go. This is. This is the previous piece, one of the previous pieces I did, and it uh, it lights up just about. That battery must be going by now. <laughs> yep. But you can see that it's um, uh, on similar sort of veins, but a quite different style. Yep. There's um, yep. This piece was actually... Uh, a little box that little wooden pieces came in each of the sections and I just kept it. And uh, that was um, part of a wooden display storage thing for you would put brushes through these holes. But it didn't work very well. It could have maybe worked if it had had some good strong glue on it as well, but it's just supposed to slot together. But I didn't like it much. <clears throat> And that's a circuit board from uh, a remote control. Actually, I believe that one was for a Bang & Olufsen television that we no longer have. And that's uh, another piece of this thing, another piece of wood from that. That's clay, that one. And as is this and this, and was put into a mold I have. And this is paper. Um dictionary paper, I think, here. And um, there's also an, um, some texture paste through stencils with words. Just fancy that. And there's various other little bits of similar sort. You can see that some of these, you may not be able to see so well, some of these are um, cotton reels like this one. That's a big one. And there's a very small one there. And that's a taller one. And there are the medium small ones here underneath. Again, the caps from water bottles. Mm -hmm. And that's part of a mask. The coverage for the vent in the mask, as is that. And um, these are little funnels that my husband brought home from work. Well, Evie, no, not polymer clay, air dry clay. And um, Fran, can you, two things, can you hit your light again? Make it, that's just fascinating to me. I remember putting those in. Um, and I know the, the crystals. Up. The, yes, the, the crystals above it that we can see shimmering. Those are. Well, those are, um, I think they're frontage. I think Stampenda's frontage. Okay. Pieces, glass pieces, glass glitter, something like that. It might be another brand. Can you turn the piece so that we can see it from the side, so we can see all the 3D? Uh, do you, does everyone see that? It's just, I just, I think it's beautiful. Thing is, when I'd finished making it, I thought, you know, that looks awfully like a sort of um, um, intergalactic base, yep. which is made me start thinking about doing the spaceship. Oh, look. You're not supposed to see that bit. <laughs> I don't know what it's doing in there. Man says fabulous. Looks like it should be part on a part on Doctor Who. Um, yeah. <laughs> and we, well, that was good idea. that sort of thing did we spend together putting this together? It was just. Yeah. It was. Well, you start by gessoing. This is one of those box frames. That, yep. and I can see that just a box frame. I called it ground control. Yep. And um, you would, uh, some people would put glass in the front and then have things in between, you know, in there for your display. Like I didn't a bother with that. Yeah. Another glass and just used it um, like that. This again, this piece 
is a larger one of these. So that had other wooden pieces in, bigger pieces. So, yeah. And um, I just thought when I saw this, it looks like ground control. So I thought I'd make a spaceship. Thing is, the spaceship I made was about three times the size of this. <laughs> <laughs> I am there. So it must be from the uh, shot. That will be there. And the spaceship will be here, pretending that it's nearer to you. Uh -huh. oh, nearer to you. <laughs> So anyway, that's it was fun to, to work on together. It was fun to watch your brain to be there with your brain doing it all. Now, Diane, Diane, um, someone asked uh, uh, your what this one was about. And Penny or uh, Diane said, Fran is doing an assemblage to describe the war between nature and technology. Yes. Very, very that's well put, Diane. Thank you. I was trying to think of one word that would say all that, and I couldn't think of one. Yeah. So at the moment, temporarily just called battle. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I want thank to you for, for showing us that. I love that piece. You're welcome. And the nice thing about this this medium that you're using, because it, it will hold down the metal, as you can see, this is what was used on the the uh, ground control piece. Um, it holds down the metal very nicely, but it dries clear. And it, if I'm not mistaken, and, and Fran will correct me, it will take a paint. Yes. Yeah. So that if she needed to paint more, which you did on that other piece, and yes, it, I did. In fact, yeah. there were places where it was sort of a bit obvious. Yes, so I painted over and it wasn't quite so obvious anymore. Right. So you didn't, you tried to be specific where you put the medium, the gel medium, but if you weren't, you were able to paint over it to just. When you, when you put it down, it, it might squeeze out, you know, and then if you can't get in there to, to s scrape up the excess, putting a bit of paint on it would do the job. Uh, Diane, you know what? The the ground control, I look at it as a floating, uh, uh, like, um, not a rocket type spaceship, but a floating, like the original ship went off into space and then it got built upon. And um, yeah, like a piece of wreckage that's been reclaimed. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And built upon from there so not, the entire thing wouldn't have been shot off into space or carried into space it some piece of it would have and then it was built upon from that way that's how yeah. I. got ground control we need another piece we need some more junk <laughs> yeah <laughs> right i gotta put this big piece down so yeah, it, whoever asked, oh, Evie asked if the clay was polymer. No, Fran, usually she does it, work with polymer, but that yeah. was the air dry. It just so happens that I was into the air dry at the time. But yeah, yeah, polymer you could do. The thing about polymer is that you've got to turn your um, your oven on yep. to uh, cure it. And um, we were feeling the pinch a bit at the time, and I thought, well, if I use air dry clay, I, what I've got to do is leave it overnight. I don't actually have to use any fuel at all. So. Okay, Colleen, thank you for being here. Oh, bye, Colleen. Yep, she has to go. Thanks for popping by. Good to see you. Now, Di Diane says, I usually add a dab of hot glue as well to hold in place right away while the other glue dries. Uh-huh. Well, I'm not going to lift this up, so it doesn't really have that problem. Not yet, anyway. I mean, I may lift it up later. Yeah. Penny says it's like a space station. Yes, that's that's what I was trying to get to. It's more, rather more like, instead of a rocket, it's more like a space station built from... Yeah, that's what I, I meant. Yes, that's why it's yeah. called ground control. Yep. This Although it's not actually on the ground. <laughs> and floating. Penny yeah, and think of it, it's built from space debris. Yeah. Certainly looks like it. Mm -hmm. 
Right, I'm going to pop that piece there. Let's get some bits on there. I still want to do some gel printing with um, blues and browns, but not together. Some are set with blues and some with browns. Because um, I was looking at doing another one of these sort of things. Um, using a gel print as a background. I've got quite this rather nice one up here. That I was thinking of using for one of them. That rather oh. nice print there. It's a lovely, lovely one. I like the sort of delicacy of the blue on the top there. Very nice. Ian's chair is collapsing a bit. It's um, wearing out. I didn't buy it all that long ago, but it just shows you. Mine I've had for ages. I got it a long time ago when I was at university. And it's when still going strong. It's actually Texas. This chair is from Texas. Back when quality still mattered. Yeah. I don't know whether they still make them in Texas. I was wondering if uh, perhaps they did. We might get one for Ian. Oh, Anne says these pieces are perfect inspiration for October's Makers collab. Mm. Are they? They were meant to be inspired by the, the Striking Sticks one. One thing leads to another. It certainly does. Right. I'm going to pop that there. Oh, there you go, Anne. Oh. You want to answer that in the chat? Uh, what is October's theme for makers? Um, I think it's something to do with recycling. I can't remember exactly what it is. Maybe Mariah will remember, seeing as how she made it up. Yeah. Is yeah. she still there? I well, yeah, but she was on her phone, so it was a little difficult, oh. and her signal was. Yeah. So I, I think Anne could. Uh, answer that but Good. if mariah is unable to yeah i think i'll put that there october yeah. is objects other consider trash might be her translation she says they have recycling <laughs> so yeah recycling so then deb says ha i'm gonna submit my shoulder for the recycling theme then okay Getting a new shoulder. I think they could get new shoulders. It would be nice if you've got a bad one. There we go. So those are in place. I like the uh, This one is not yet. And this one is not. This one is not. And this one isn't. And nor are these two. So all this area is not done yet. That's in place. So I've got to think where I'm going to put that large piece. I was going to put it there, but I've now got to put that there. So I want to put it sort of there like that. Yes, I think that's a good position for that. So you want but, to work uh, it out. So these I've got to put in the microwave to make sure they're all right. Mm-hmm. And uh, I want to put another one of these things on top of there, but only after the gauze has gone over it, after the organza has gone on. Oh, wow. so, because it's sort of a mist in between the two. And uh, there'll be other bits on top of this as well, like like a um, like piece of nice bark or something, you know, to sort of integrate it into a hole. That's the idea. Hi, Carla. Welcome, welcome. Not sure which way round to do that. Whether it should be that way. What do you think is the best orientation for that? All right. Go back the other way. There's the original. 
Yep, I like that way. Now, whether I like it, I like it that side up. Yeah, I think I do too, yeah. I'm not sure I like that pointy pokey thing. Yeah, that's been bothering me too. But I reckon that the best thing to do with that is to take it back out in the workshop and fire it up again, wrinkle well, it up a bit more. You could leave it, but put it down towards the bottom, turn it. 180 degrees yeah put it down towards the bottom and that way it stays see now that looks more flowy that i like that better i'd have yeah. to put something on if i was going to yeah, use that to stick to, down. yeah you can't have yeah. it sticking up. It, yeah but i do yeah, like quite, placement. i like going. that look better so you don't lose the pointy thing but it's not hanging off to hurt somebody yeah well, it won't hurt anybody. It's only tie back. Oh, and here I thought it was a piece of copper. No, oh, that's good, isn't it? Oh, yeah, <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> okay, right, Lee, so. uh, I hope you come back and watch watch the rest of it or or see the end. So, I think I can leave that for now. Because if I'm going to take that out and try and do something with that piece so it's not so in your face. <clears throat> and then I can decide where I'm going to put these exactly. I so think this I... is a bad sort of orientation for most of it anyway. Yeah. I think. And then the Misty. I think the Misty organza is what I'm leaning towards. I really do. Yeah. I think I'm sort of talking myself into it. Yeah. Um, and Mariah said, you could include yeah, this. A piece of, piece of oh, this yeah. upper organ. It's lost there. You can't see it. Yeah, it is lost. I like it, but it is lost. I'm I'm yeah. more that. No, Sorry, did I Mariah know. say something? Oh, she said, you can include this for the Striking Sticks collab and for the uh, October one for both. I could do a new one for October, huh? You could do whatever you I have, want. I have other ideas as well. I mean, I just like making these sort of things. So I've got loads of canvases down here. I could do some more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, now with this, I put them so that some of the sticks were pointing down so that they would sort of give some room to the other things. But I still want it sort of poking over the top, going off the canvas. Yeah. Like I've got a yeah. piece of wood going off the canvas down here. This was also an option for for another piece. Um, I've got loads more bits, but I don't think I'm not sure about that because I, I think I need a little bit of empty space here and there. But I've got to put all the wood on anyway, so that's got to go on. And I want that one because of the colour. And the lichen yes and <clears throat> i definitely want some of these pieces of bark because they're such beautiful pieces mariah said she she's sending you encouragement she said you do it fran i do like that one the best i think Hi, Susan. And that goes on top like that. I do like that. <clears throat> yeah. Well, that's the idea. That's the kind of idea I'm thinking. It works with it. The, 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 the other one, the greenish one, um, takes it's too much. It's a little loud, isn't it? Yeah, it's a bit loud. It takes too much eye. This all yeah. flows to me. In my mind, this all flows. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. It's, it's got enough color without having being too overpowering. Yeah. So it, it's sort of, um, yeah, I like that. Yeah. I've got to decide how I'm going to stick it down, but I don't know what I'm going to do about that. I dare say that will be one anchor point. But I want to bend it underneath, you see, because I want a, a couple of layers here and there. I don't really want the edges showing. Well, now, I've done 
I've done with fabric, I've used a stiffener, a glue and water for for my crochet pieces especially. I can use a glue and water, more water than glue, to give it a little bit of stiffness. So I don't think I want to do that. I think I like the soft, delicate feel of it too much. All I want to do is is anchor it in some places and let it flow free. Well, and I'm just saying for that part, you could probably just use your gel medium then. Oh, yeah, yeah. But I've just got to decide where I'm going to anchor it down, you see. I mean, that would be one point, obviously. But yeah. um, I want to bend some underneath. So I've got to secure it down to the substrate and then fold it over. So I shall probably have to stick that side down first. In fact, I could simply stick it over like that so that that's securing it um i was going to say so granny has a suggestion she said i'd wind the organza around a couple of the spools to help guide it into place uh i'm not sure about that i think that might be a, a bit too constraining yeah exact i want it to be more like a mist a fog than something directed you know yes. i think if you wind it around a spool it will look too deliberately placed and <clears throat> not free enough yeah your vision it, you go your it, way difficult balancing act making sure it's secure and doesn't look like it's um, um been forced into position so let it look like it's flowing but still have it secure so it's yeah it's not so easy to do as you might think yeah well anyway so that's that I'm going to leave that now to dry and then get on with the rest of it. And I'm glad now I didn't glue that down before because now, thinking about it, it will probably glue quite well through that onto the substrate and that will secure both. I think that's a good idea. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, revisit the way you – I think you've decided on the organza, the choice of organza. So revisit yeah. it. Carla says, free the organza and the whales. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Me well, too, I think Megan. talking to all of you has helped me decide, helped me come yeah. to that decision. It's not like I, I ask other people what I should do. It's more like I just talk to you. Yep. And um, between us, um, <laughs> something solidifies in my head, and I go, that's the way. <laughs> I'm, I'm just your wall. It's okay. You go ahead and bounce yeah, off. I need a wall. Okay. Need a wall. Yeah, Shirley Valentine needs a ball. Yep, exactly. I know that. I love that. I what? know who she is. She talks to the wall. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, Shirley Valentine, exactly. Until she, until she oh. leaves her husband and goes off and. Yep. Enjoy. Yep. Right. Well, we'll leave yep. that for now then. All those pieces. Let's have a little look at how that. Um, thing of me is doing where did i put it uh, mm. hello where have you gone hello well, pull that lid off don't do it don't hang your face right over it because the fumes will right into your face oh yeah there are any I think, uh, that will take some doing because i don't know where i put it now <laughs> words are hello. hard especially while typing on the phone yes they are Hello. <laughs> what are you? Where are you? Over you there. <laughs> Mariah said it, not me. Mariah says it's over there. All oh, right. Okay. Mariah's <laughs> fault then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you didn't go far with it. What'd you do with it? Oh, no, I didn't Did you go take far with it. it? And you went off to get your, to have a, when you left me here? Did you take it with you? I don't think so. I don't think so. I just went to get the the um thing. Did you put it on the floor or anywhere? Control floor. That's a thought. On the floor anywhere. Well, if you can't find it, it's under something. Yes. Yeah, okay, so Trish. Was... Thank you for being here. Trish has to go. Oh, bye bye, Trish. That's what I said, Mariah. That's she, she, she does that like pee. It's something got put on top of it. Yep, very likely. 
Yep. Oh, well, if we can't find it, we can't find it. I'll just have to have a look later. Well, we Ooh. will be back yes. Wednesday and or Friday and do, you know, show a little bit more as this goes. This is a this is going to be a series. Um, yes, of, it's going to take a bit of because I've got an idea for another one. Yeah. Another one of those using different colors and materials and some the same, some not. As I say, I was thinking about putting it the other one on that. I have to ask, do you have a sealant on that? That it that it's so um it's got gotta be... No, it's just the paint. It's just the That's paint. That's a gel print. That's a gel print. It's just really nice. It looks leathery. It does rather, doesn't it? Yes. Leathery. Definitely not that. It's not in there. What on earth can I have done with it? Baking soda and vinegar, Carla. Would baking soda and vinegar help whiten bright white tennis shoes? Hi, Jasper. It's not underneath ground control. My goodness. I mean, you need to find that. That's. Oh, I will. I will. I know. It'll be knocking about somewhere. I mean, it can't be far because I was only sitting here when I moved it, wherever I moved it. And anyway. It's definitely not on the desk up to your right. Nope. Definitely not. Nothing. And it's not in any of those, um, my, uh, Little Shelby's. Huh. That's crazy. You know what's happened, don't you? Uh-huh. The gremlins have taken it. Uh-huh. Yep. That's where I'm going. <laughs> yep, yep. The gremlins have got it. Yeah. They like it so much. So well, if we're gonna do this one. I was thinking sticks on this as well, you see, because it was sticks that got me started. Yeah, think things and bar. And I also got these sticks over here. These are sticks. Let's get rid of that. Oh, I was going to ask you about those. Yeah, these are uh, like paper beads that you made wrapped around uh, Q tip sticks. Yep, hollow Q tip sticks. We, we call not hollow, these are made of bamboo. Oh. I uh, see. So that's why they're sticks, you see, because it started with these sticks. I was sitting there looking at them and thinking, they're sticks, they're made of bamboo. That was the first stick thing that I picked up. <clears throat> yes, this is what we worked on Friday. This is what I had. It was stuck in my brain until and I had to ask you, please replicate that. What? The circle with the with the uh, kitty litter. Um, what you oh, did right. writing? <clears throat> and I've got these other ones here. Yep. And then the triangle. There's there's a uh, painted kitty litter, colored kitty litter on them. I was going to go out and look for another stick and this time shave it, you know, uh, peel off the, well, not peel, but sort of scrape off the bark to get a, a, a raw stick. I do like those sort of sticks. So that would have more of this sort of colour. And that's bamboo as well. But um, I use that as a pen, so <laughs> I didn't really want to glue it down. So that's an idea. And I wouldn't be using all of these. I'd be choosing from them. Jasper says, hi, Frankie. Hi, Jasper. So I'm thinking these ones because I wanted to use these before. Well, you I know, didn't. I was working on my uh, paper beads the other day, Friday when we were on, and I finished up a whole bunch of them. And now you've got, I was going to use them for journal dangles, but I think I'm going to save some and make some more even 
for uh, <clears throat> see on some of these I painted the ends different colors but I don't think I want to use those I think I want to use the naked ones naked I want it a bit higher up too sort of like that yep I agree it looks like a chicken foot that was a bit, didn't it? Yep, that's what Mariah said. Chicken foot. Hmm. I might like be able to use that even. I do like that so much. What else we got? So we're just somebody's asking, uh, what are we making today? Jasper asked. Um at this point, she's just sort of brainstorming uh, a new uh, canvas. A new piece. Yeah. A new piece, yes. Um, yep. Or, and Mariah said, uh, chicken foot or a stick rune, some voodoo. Ooh, voodoo. Ooh. I was thinking garden fork, you know, one of those ones that. Um, Pitchfork. Uh, just, Pitchfork. No, the ones that uh, grub out the weeds in between the path. One of those. Like sort of. Anyway, whatever. It's that's something that we've had in the in here before. Well, it, it's making Silver Granny hungry for spicy chicken feet. <laughs> Righto. <laughs> so glad we can inspire. <laughs> <laughs> Quite like the idea of those. There's a there's a there's a combo here. There's we have uh, natural wood, we have paper, we have uh, kitty litter, kitty litter, copper, copper and <laughs> metal look pieces. And I say metal look um, yeah. because it's silver. Uh, what a combo! What a combo here! See where you go with this. Just. There should be another piece. I thought I had another one of those. Two of those. Under, oh no. Up above there. There we go, in here. See that's how she's got, she's got jars and boxes and treasure chests full of bits and bobs and. I think that might be, um, and much more might make it a little bit too, too full. Well, now there's an idea. There's a there's a thought right there with that. Uh, Penny says we just need water, and I'm trying to imagine something added that makes it look like the flow of water, a waterfall, uh, a stream of water. Um, what could you add there? You've got so many mm. elements. Just a minute. Right, so that's the wrong box, not the box I was thinking of. Maybe it's that one. Maybe it's I, this I, one. I have to say though, the the chicken foot, the the uh, the the fork or whatever, the garden thing, it wants to be the focal point. Yes, yes, I think so. And in fact, I might. Yeah, it needs. It needs something, movement or addition or something. Okay, Martha, thank you for being here with us. The water. Oh, wow. Now that's not a bad idea. <laughs> yeah, a puddle. Yeah, a puddle. Hmm. Oh, there's something like that one. I'm not quite so fond of that. No. No. Oh. <clears throat> <laughs> I 
Well, um, Silver Granny, no, the kitty litter is brand new, never been touched. It's not recycled kitty litter. Fran no, no longer has a cat. It, it's recycled in as much as it was left over after we no longer had a cat when we were up north. Right. And when we moved down south, the I left a, a load of the packing to the furniture removals men, and they just packed absolutely everything, including the remains of the kitty litter, still in the bag, unused. Thank God they didn't pack any used stuff. You never know with people like that. <laughs> and now there, there's a thought. Diane said, um, okay, uh, Martha, go go rest and take care. I found okay. it. Yay. Found it. Where was it, Fran? Over there? On the mantelpiece. <laughs> it was on the mantelpiece. Um, Diane oh. says, I think some modeling paste and bossing on the paper would add interest and texture. Hmm. Well, I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure about that because there's quite a lot going on on the paper as it is. And I think that would be too much, I think. I think we've got enough in the pattern on the paper and the things on top of the paper. Having embossing on it as well, I think would just... I like the smooth surface of the background as it is. You know, the nice gloss on it. Um, no, so let's have a minute. You're kind of sort of at... Well, you have probably missed most of it, but that's okay, dear. Wow. Now, you can see that there is some patina coming on that copper. You can see the blue there. Let me see if I can show you better. Just bits. I can see it. So, so this you can is see that it's coming. It's very light at the moment. I will leave that for much longer yet. That's the big piece of, uh, of copper. That's the piece of brass in there. Okay. okay. So you can see now that there is fat. See that shine on my fingers? Yep. On my finger? That's fat from the crisps. Uh, we're about a, almost an hour and a half in, Paula. Um, for to recap for everybody that didn't see the beginning, um, that is a, a, a container with potato chips um, and um, salt and vinegar crisps, as we call them here. Yeah, and extra salt and, and extra vinegar. Uh, and poured or and Fran poured malt vinegar in there with pieces of copper and bronze to add brass. Um, copper and brass 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 to uh, yep. create a rust slash patina look patina. on it and that's what we're getting so and that's only yep. been sitting there for less than an hour and a half yeah so I reckon tomorrow it should be really quite nicely ripe yeah Fine. but we'll see I mean the 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 delicate balancing act is between um, removing the crisps too soon so they haven't had a chance for patinas to form around the edges of each crispy bit and um, leaving it too late and you go and have a look, say, in a month's time and find that there's no bit of copper left anymore. It's all patinaed away to a solution. <laughs> yeah. Had that happen? Had that happen? <laughs> So, yeah, you've got to sort of strike a balance between them. Yes, I, I, I think I want a couple of um, pieces shaved so that they're um, a, a nice, smooth, white wood-looking thing <clears throat> to go with this. That's what I think. Whittled I'm not wood. Sure if I'm of that. Debarked wood, yeah. That would, yep. Anyway. I think that would be a nice different effect, and then I can leave these bare, you see, because they will go with that. So I'll go out in the garden tomorrow and see what I can find. Lying about. It all depends on how sturdy some of these sticks are, because I've sat there for a while with a stick in my hand, shaving the extra bits off, you know, and getting rid of the bark, and then suddenly it breaks in my hand. It's like, oh, that was a bit more brittle than I thought. Yeah, and I've got to have something to put this on as well. I believe I have just used the only canvas that was that size. It was a set. I've got um, 
Let's see, about five, five different pieces, and I've used the one that's this size already on the other one. Uh huh. So, unless I can find another canvas somewhere, which I probably could. I probably could, or a bigger piece, but then I'd need to use different paper because that would no longer fit. Well, the other option is to get some, I can probably nip out and get some Dallarone, um board. Probably get a board in that sort of size. Yeah. Uh, or just use some thick card or um, a piece of hardboard. Hardboard, yeah. Thick board. Yeah, something like that. Paula says, um, you've used crisp. She's got some live yogurt on her copper bits at the moment. Yes, somebody mentioned using live yogurt and yesterday. Diane said, I go the lazy route, which I don't think is lazy, and using it's just non scientific -y. And And she uses embossing glaze and paper artsy rusting powder. Yeah, I think that's actually more labor intensive, that one. It might be quicker and you're more involved in the process. And but the other one is the natural, sort of natural way, leaving it to um, react with the salt and vinegar. That's less effort, but you've got to have the patience. <laughs> so yeah. it's sort of half one and six the other. And Silver Granny says, Fran, don't uh, need something more substantial in the upper right corner to balance the heaviness in the lower left corner. Maybe I don't yeah. know that this this isn't a completed. This is just a thought process right now. Yeah. So, yeah. Probably like that other one um, started it, off a lot simpler than than the way it's um, evolved into. Yes, exactly. Uh, yeah. It, yeah. It's just thinking it out. It, it's nothing's in concrete yet. We've we've talked about that. Um, yeah, Paula. It's not lazy, but we like to try mad stuff. But of course, you've got to remember that when these are done, I could use one of those pieces on this. So that might balance it more. I mean, I don't know. I've got other pieces that I can use. I've got <clears throat> these are pieces of copper that were done many years ago, and they have their pattern around them. Mm -hmm. So done in the same way. Okay. So I could maybe cut that. <coughs> shape it into something I have a couple more of these things that one's actually got patina on it that one hasn't I just love those things by themselves <laughs> yeah they're quite fun aren't they yeah <clears throat> I just like them but I, I've had them I did them a while ago I just did it because I like to do them yep. but I didn't yep. have to use them in anything so it would be rather fun to use them. I'm not sure about using something like that. Everybody uses things like that. Not sure about that. I do have that, which is a little air dry clay tap. <coughs> I could maybe. Um, oh, I agree, Diane. Uh, I have powder. I have a, uh, I have a probably a handful of golf tees, wooden golf tees that I'm trying to incorporate into something. I'm like, can I crochet around them or wire or what? Uh, it just, they're just so cool. Me too, Evie. I love copper bits. And Fran, her favorite is copper. She just, yeah. If you give me a choice of three and one of them's copper, I'll choose copper. So if you give me a choice of time. seven one of them's copper, I'll choose copper. <laughs> you would live it's in very... the land of copper and everything else would just be, you know, like like sprinkles. It's it's okay. She can live with it or out without it, but don't take away the copper. Yeah, don't take away the copper. Of course, you can always use things like this. <laughs> How'd you do that? Pulled the paper out. It's a bit uncertain, isn't it? That's not a very good one. It's not sure what it's doing. Maybe there's a better one in there. It's a bit less uncertain about life. 
and Paula is asking, how's your white mold situation? And she's still waiting on yeah. uh, remediation, someone to come and yeah. do a professional. It, well, just do a test and tell me if it's lethal or not. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> There's another one. Yeah, the, the, if you put the water tap above the puddle, then you've got your... Um, Cause and effect. Yeah, there you go. How's that? And I can paint that copper as well. <laughs> yeah. How's that, Penny? That that works, huh? Oh, look at that. She just gets so fancy. Now you're just showing off. <laughs> Ooh. Now that's um putting light. If I get that right in the right position. Stick it there, for instance. It doesn't want to stay. No, it doesn't. It can show a light up there. Give you a little cast a little light everywhere. Eee. What I'd like <clears throat> is for him next door to retire, and then he can make me a battery that I can switch on and off. And change the change the battery on the lights whenever I want to. So if the bat <laughs> if the lights go out, I can put a new battery in, and they go on again. Well, I don't have these batteries that are stuck in there, and that's it. That's all you get. January, and then give him a little January. time to catch his breath. End of end of January. He's got at least a month off. Yeah, before and then a month to... off, and then yeah, and then he's well. There, you, look at that. A pearl amongst stuff. No. Yeah. Or oh. oh, now you're not supposed to fall well, over. You you actually gave me an idea. Just the little cap with the little things in it down there looks like a nest and a nest with eggs would go well with a stick what that one no over in your your bin in your little container you've got a cap uh -huh. of eggs. yeah well not necessarily to use the cap as the nest you could wrap some wire and create a nest you could just yeah. up some Actually, I've, got some, I've got some rather nice um already um patinered wire somewhere up there there and it is crunch it up Hang put, on. put a thumbprint in it and it's a nest and then paint those eggs copper or something and put them down in there now that would be a stick thing a tree thing okay mariah mariah oh that's too nope. big nope too big nope no but i can wind it closer and make it smaller <clears throat> but it's already patented. My mind is I I strip copper wire from um, cords and cables that Russ brings home, and it's thin and and bre breaks easily, and it's perfect for clumping up into a nest. Mariah has to go get in these so She's got to go. Bye, Mariah. Bye, Mariah. And Diane, um, I've done that. And what I've done, and Sharon has helped me learn, is I've taken some of my paints, the colors that I want, and find the, and create the colors that I want. And Sharon sent me some sand, beautiful sand. And I add the sand to the paints to get a texture. And I create a patina. So it's a faux patina. You're getting closer. I still think copper wire would be not bad, though. Yeah. Uh, not bad. That's not bad. Do you that see what I'm copper. saying? Yeah. Do you see what I'm saying though? And then if your eggs were copper, what do you think? Maybe too many eggs there. Oh. <laughs> but it, it has, you know, you think of sticks, trees, shrubbery, and then there's always a nest hidden in a tree or a shrub somewhere. Yeah. And that then becomes once again a bird's foot. 
<laughs> well, or branches on a tree. Yeah, or a very big bird's foot. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, paint the eggs I've copper. got loads of these. I got loads of these. I could paint some copper. No problem. Yeah. I like that. I like it. But then it becomes, yeah, you do you. It was just popped into my head. I had to share. Uh -huh. Well, let's put the um, turn the battery off. Yeah, light up the copper eggs then. Yeah. Ooh. Put the light down in them with the copper eggs. If the eggs were copper and the light were down in there to glow on. Oh, good idea, Paula. Oh, look at here. We're brainstorming here. <laughs> I like thing that. is, the white eggs show up really nicely. I will paint some copper and we'll see what it looks like. We'll see. What are I'll those exactly? They're not They're eggs, just polystyrene obviously. eggs. They're just polystyrene shapes in the shape of eggs. I've got an old oh. packet on them up there. Small foam deco eggs. Got them on my file. Amazon. Very cool. Hi, Carrie. <laughs> welcome, welcome. That's Hi, Carrie. Terrific. Say hello to Carrie. Hello, Carrie. He's been doing a lot of work lately, hasn't he? Yes, he has. Cleaning and making videos and doing loads. I love his videos. Yeah. He's very good at explaining things. Yep. Well, so are you if I be quiet long enough. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's something to think about anyway. I'll see what happens when I get some nice shaved sticks. I think that one's a bit too dry and brittle to attempt to do that with it. But I can go out and have a look and see what's come down lately. So I think, what time are we on now? We're about an hour and a half in. Yeah. Give or take. We, we could do a couple of uh, prints. I don't really want to do too many. My back's not great at the moment. Well, so many, so many are, um, um, we're, we're down to 12 people watching because so many have had to go and do their thing today. So uh, if you were, if you wanted to say done, that would be okay, dear. Okay, could do, yes. Back in your lungs of rest. Oh, yes. Silver Granny says it's time for her to go start dinner but we've given you've given her some ideas and she can't wait to get into her studio i hope you do i hope you get that, in that's and... really the best thing if i've given somebody some ideas that's yeah. very good we like to inspire it probably won't end up shaped like this but there's a beginning some ideas yeah, for that one yeah, it's a, it's a just a layout just a thought just yeah. looking at elements and placement and possibilities everything's possibilities yep yeah. Here we go. So let's bring you back in and we can say we're about done for today because, yeah, my back is a bit achy. Yeah. It's been quite so bad at the coughing. So I think that's definitely improved a bit, but whether that's a permanent improvement or it's just cyclic hey. or whether it's hey. because I'm not in there where the um, white mold is on my furniture, yeah. I don't know. I'm still waiting to find out. But in the meantime, we are going to be inventive because we've started, so we'll finish. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, Kerry is an expert. Okay. <laughs> I saw that. Well, we hope we okay. inspire you all in some way or shape or form. So go yeah. play, go create, go throw stuff together and sit down and see what you can make with it you think it's junk but you never know if you paint it and make it look like that it's art yeah. exactly and i'll paint that to copper hi darcy Let's see what happens yeah go ahead right. well, goodbye for now hi darcy bye everybody debsy liz carla that's mad frankie yeah, this is my Frankie. Well, that's Vada Igor over there. And we are the mad scientists, and we're saying bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.